In the previous set of videos, we discussed the various applications of the equilibrium constant. In this one, we are going to be talking about the relationship between the equilibrium constant, the reaction quotient, and Gibbs energy. So, we know what the equilibrium constant is, that is K reaction quotient. We discussed about what it was in the uh, predicting the direction of the reaction that in like the reaction quotient helps us predict if a reaction is going to move in the forward direction or the backward direction and I will link the video where we discussed each of those in the description below and the third one is Gibbs energy if you've noticed I have not completed thermodynamics as a chapter um, and I started equilibrium because I was <clears throat> I wanted to start another chapter and now thermodynamics decided to come back in equilibrium. Anyways, if you have learned about thermodynamics, uh, you will notice that uh, in that chapter you had something related to the Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium. Um, but in this one, we'll be talking about how all of these are related to each other. So first of all, what is Gibbs energy? So this is the definition that I picked up from modern ABCs chemistry. It's really good. Uh, and so Gibbs energy is the maximum amount of energy available to a system during a process that can be converted to useful work. Basically, it's the amount of energy that is available to do work. And uh, from there, you probably also learned that delta G, that is a change in the Gibbs free energy, is equal to delta H minus T delta S, where delta H is change in enthalpy and uh, T is the absolute temperature, delta S is the change in entropy. Um, again, this is only to give you a basic idea of Gibbs energy. I do hope to complete thermodynamics one day. Uh, I will do it. Uh, so basically, when delta G is negative, then basically when it's less than zero, the process is a spontaneous process. On the other hand, when delta G is positive, that is greater than zero, process is not spontaneous. This is all we need to know for this particular uh, video. So, for first of all, Kc does not depend upon the rate of the reaction. So, not once have we told, oh, okay, fine, if Kc is high or if Kc is low, the rate of the reaction is high or low. We know that the rate of reaction and Kc are actually, like, they're not dependent on each other. On the other hand, Kc is related to the Gibbs free energy and that is why we have this video. So, Basically, uh, when we have a Gibbs energy, let's take a chemical reaction. A plus B gives rise to C plus D. This is the chemical reaction. The first case is where A plus B, the Gibbs free... Okay. C plus D. So for this particular reaction, Gibbs free energy, the change in Gibbs energy, delta G, is negative. So when delta G is negative, then the process is supposed to be spontaneous, which means the forward reaction takes this. Okay. Now, let's take another case. C plus D gives rise to A plus B. This means delta G, in this case, delta G is positive. And when it's positive, the process is not spontaneous. So, the, this reaction, that is C plus D getting converted to A plus B, is not spontaneous. But when you flip the reaction, delta G is going to be negative, And that will mean the forward reaction will take place like in this case. So here the process is not spontaneous. So the reverse reaction takes place or proceeds. Okay, now in the third case A plus B delta G is equal to zero. So this means there will be no forward or no backward process, which means the system or the equilibrium or the, 
the reaction system is in equilibrium okay so first case a plus b gives rise to c plus b d delta g is negative delta g is negative means it's a spontaneous process so the forward reaction takes place when c plus d gives rise to a plus b delta g is positive which means the reverse of this process is actually spontaneous so the forward reaction is going to be not spontaneous and so the reverse reaction takes place. The third case, A plus B gives rise to C plus C, delta G equals to zero. This is in equilibrium. Okay, so this, uh, this obviously is the basic idea of the relationship between delta G and the direction of a reaction. Next, we will have, we, if you remember, uh, we had an equation in thermodynamics, again thermodynamics, where delta G equals to delta G minus um, plus RT ln Q. Okay, so here delta G is going to be the change in Gibbs energy and this is at a fixed composition so it's at a particular or fixed composition of the mixture delta G minus is the difference in standard Gibbs energies of formations of the products and reactants both in their standard states so it's the standard Gibbs energy of formation of both the reactants and products in their standard states q is the reaction quotient and r is the universal gas constant so this is an equation that you learned in thermodynamics so at equilibrium we know that delta g equals to zero that is what we learned a minute ago that is delta g when delta g is equal to zero the process is like the forward and the back process takes place simultaneously which means the system is at equilibrium so delta g is equal to zero not just that the value of q will be equal to kc that is the reaction quotient is equal to the equilibrium constant so we're basically substituting that so delta g minus plus rt ln kc will be equal to zero now we'll be rearranging this so delta delta g minus equals to minus rt ln kc which is equal to ln kc equals to minus delta g by rt basically we're bringing this here along with the negative sign flipping the equation so now when we take the antilog of this mathematically when we take the antilog of this particular um, equation we get kc equals to e to the power minus delta g by rt so spontaneity can be predicted in terms of delta g not minus as well so when you have delta g minus is less than zero okay less than zero means this so sorry actually i should have left a minus sign as it is so if it's less than zero min that is it's negative minus into minus becomes plus so this value minus delta g by g naught by rt equals to a positive value in this case kc will be sorry this means our e to the power minus delta g minus by rt will be greater than 1 okay this will also mean kc is going to be greater than 1 and we know the reaction is spontaneous when kc is greater than 1 and it proceeds in the forward direction when delta g minus is greater than zero okay minus delta g minus by rt equals to negative which means this will be less than one right it's 
is less than 1, which means Kc will be less than 1. And when Kc is less than 1, then it is a non-spontaneous reaction. And the, the forward reaction will take place only to a small extent and only a minute, only a small quantity of the products are formed. So basically, in this video, we discussed the relationship between equilibrium constant reaction quotient and Gibbs energy. First of all, Gibbs energy is the, again, this was from modern ABC's chemistry class 11 textbook and I actually found this really helpful. So Gibbs energy is the maximum amount of energy available to a system during a process that can be converted to useful work. So when we know that when delta G is negative, that is when it's less than zero, the process is spontaneous. When delta G is positive, process is not spontaneous. Similarly, when we take a chemical reaction, if the delta G for that particular reaction, so if delta G for this particular reaction is is less than 1, this means the forward reaction is spontaneous. Whereas if it was positive, then the backward reaction is spontaneous because the forward reaction wouldn't have been spontaneous. Um, and when delta G is equal to 0, the system is in equilibrium. You learned in thermodynamics, you came across probably this equation, I hope you did, uh, where delta G equals to delta G minus plus RT ln Q, where, where delta G is the change in Gibbs free energy at a particular composition of the mixture. Delta G minus is the difference in standard Gibbs energies of formation of the product and reactants, both in their standard states. R is the universal gas constant, T is the temperature, Q is the reaction quotient. At equilibrium, delta G equals to 0 and Q equals to Kc. We are just substituting that and when we simplify it, we get Kc equals to e to the power minus delta G minus by Rt. When delta G minus is less than 0, which just means it's negative, this value becomes positive and this gets becomes greater than 1. Because, okay, I figured out what this meant today. Basically, this to the power something is two point some value to the power that value so when it has a minus sign it becomes one by two to the two point something to the power x so that is why here it is greater than one and so kc is also greater than one and so the reaction is spontaneous it takes place to a great extent in the forward direction on the other hand delta g minus is negative is greater than zero which means it's positive this value becomes negative and so e to the power this becomes less than one kc is also less than one so the reaction is not going to be spontaneous and it will take place to a very small ex extent a very minute quantity of the products will be formed from the reactants and i hope you understood whatever i just discussed in the next video we will be discussing the example problems related to the relationship between equilibrium constant reaction quotient and gibbs energy and i hope you understood all of this